Hello. Oh, fuck's sake. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and I forget that intro. Fuck it, you know. I'm too lazy to edit it out or edit to do the do the take again to retake the take. What is this intro? Um, yeah, I've no idea what I'm reacting to, but I just wanted to say that um, my internet it got fixed. I did a call to um, to my provider, and he said, "Oh, you're on frequency one. Everyone is, you know, all your neighbors are on frequency one." So uh, you need to change it, or he changed it to frequency 11. So he literally turned it up to 11, so I should have the best internet right now. And I have to say, I don't have a fly yet. I don't have, uh, I don't have a disconnection or something. I don't have, you know, anything wrong with my internet now. So I'm probably gonna live stream, you know, just in a bit to kind of test it out, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna check out what I'm doing. I've no idea what I'm doing, so there you have it. Um, fuck's sake, this is, a, this is a very... I've no idea what I'm saying, fuck's sake. Um, this is a very good prepared video, I suppose, so there you go. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what the fucking video am I doing today? <laughs> I genuinely don't know. I think it's like another bench list, I suppose. So. Uh, it's here. Girl power songs. Not really into that, honestly. Classic duets. Eh. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, the the top 10, yeah, yeah, the top 10 post-band solo careers. Uh, yeah, I believe I saw this video. Uh, I, I didn't per se saw this video, um, you know, as in actually watching it, but I saw the thumbnail. I, I know that uh, Justin Timberlake is the thumbnail, uh, Justified, you know, in sync pussy era, J Justin Timberlake. I personally prefer... Um, I've no idea how the second albums. I've no idea how any of his albums are called again, <coughs> except for Justified and uh, Man in the Woods or something. That new atrocity that he dropped. <coughs> Fuck's sake! Even me talking about the record is, you know, making me choke, making me uh, fill it up. Oh uh, yeah, so of course Justin Timberlake is going to be on the list. You know, in sync. Post band solo careers, if you can call in sync a band, I suppose there are guys in there that don't play an instrument, but whatever. But I get what they're saying, you know. He has, he, he did have a great post band career. It is pretty, yeah, to say, very generous, I suppose. And Dave Grohl, of course, you know that's the first thing that pops pops in my mind. Dave Grohl of you know Nirvana, and then. Um, yeah, yeah, Foo Fighters, I, I thought, this Queens came first or Foo Fighters, but yeah, yeah, uh, I think, or yeah, yeah, Foo Fighters obviously, you know, that was right after Nirvana, so there we go. And then Queens, of course, and that's, that's pretty much my preference right there, Queens, I think, you know, Queens is easily the best band out of those three bands, so there we go. In my opinion, you know, that's what I think, if you disagree, then let me know, or let me know why. So yeah, Dave Grohl, uh, Justin Timberlake, uh, Slash maybe, I don't know, you know, Velvet Revolver, Slash a sna a Snake Pit, uh, fucking um, uh, Slash and Moss Kennedy. My Beyond there, the slideshow is Sting, uh, I suppose so, Sting is pretty popular, mildly popular, uh, Jack White, I guess. Um, Oh, oh yeah, oh, this is a really good one. That's probably gonna be the thumbnail. Um, gorillas, yeah, <laughs> that is that might be number one right there because um, the next uh, request is top ten animated music groups, and well, we all know what is number one. I mean, come on now, they're easily the best. So yeah, gorillas is my prediction right there. You know, just Timberlake slash maybe. Uh, 
Dave Grohl obviously, so uh, Sting. That's pretty much half of the list, I, I think, so we go. I have to say, I don't have... I have no interruption right now, as in with internet, so that's good. Uh, Robert Plant, that's a good one. That was something that recently happened to Robert Plant, I think. Some people did a tribute to him, I think, or... Or, I saw one video where he got like rushed onto the stage or something, like one person was almost pushing, pushing him off the stage. And he, he was very cool about it, he was like, Okay, okay, easy, easy, relax now. He, he, he was so fucking cool about that. Like, Robert Plant is a fucking dude, mate. I mean, he got off Zeppelin though, so yeah, Robert Plant. I, I just haven't really invested into Robert Plant's solo career. I know that Black Lodge, I think, is a, is a title, is a song that, you know, that's on classic rock radio, so I think that is a thing. I haven't heard any other song though. I believe he collaborated with a country artist uh, at one point. I have no idea. Yeah, a uh, big log. I love the riff on this one. He sounds so different there. He, lo he looks so different there. Uh, Jack White, yeah. I didn't even recognize Jack White right there. Oh fuck off. John Henley, I suppose, throw that bloke in there. Uh, Eddie Vedder? No. I, I will say, oh is it Eddie Vedder? Because he kind of has, you know, Eddie Vedder has that kind of country, kind of slick folk look to him. Because, you know, Pearl Jam is kind of a... Not per se country, but kind of more of a grunge folk rock band. And that's why I love them. I think they're great because they have great melodies, they have great harmonies, they have, you know, their heavy side to them, then they have their, you know, their softer side verse, and they have their folk uh, tone uh, with uh, fucking. Uh, they have their folk tone with vital Vitology. I love that album. So those are some great albums by, in my opinion, a great band, so there you go. And personally, I am a way bigger Pearl Jam fan than I am a Nirvana fan, so there you go. Uh, you know, I'm not even a Nirvana fan, so there you go. Uh, oh, Eric Clapton. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, a, I'm not an Eric Clapton fan, but just him being in Cream and in fucking um, Derek and the Dominoes and the solo career, like, Eric Clapton has an am or amazing. He has a really impressive discography. I don't want to say amazing because I don't find Eric Clapton amazing. But what he did with music, this album, the Cream albums, his solo career, it's really impressive. I cannot deny the talents that Eric Clapton has. It's just not for me. It's just kind of too simplistic for me. But it is really good though. His discography is impressive. So it should be higher in my opinion, but you know, him being at number 10 might say that, you know, the whole list is going to be fire, but you know what Mojo and they're inconsistent as fuck, I mean, come on now. Number 10, Eric Clapton, Derek and the Dominic. Probably a lot of people are going to shit on Watch Mojo right now because Eric, Eric Clapton is number 10 and they're going, to, they're going to throw Justin Timberlake later on this list. That's going to get him a lot of flag, I think. Coming in at number 10 is the legendary guitarist who earned a name for himself playing with not one, but three successful bands. Exploiting his master I guess that his first band was um, Derek and the Dominoes. I believe that was his debut and then Cream. Or was Cream first? I don't know, but I, I think Derek was first, then Cream, and then the solo career. So that's still pretty impressive, though. Captain earned the ironic nickname Slowhead before releasing. Yeah, as in slow fab. I, I still have no idea what that slow hand metaphor means or that that name. It just sounds so retarded. He was able to do thanks to his musical talents. Tears in heaven. 
Yeah, I'm gonna call this song the most fucking... Um, the most regretful song in his career because it did make him a shitload of money. But people want him to play that song, although it's about his, you know, his deceased, his uh, past uh, son of, I think, five years old, which is messed up. But, you know, to write a song about that and, you know, people to remember, you know, it's such an iffy song for me. It's not bad, it's not a bad song. But just the history behind it is really messed up, you know, and people want to hear it because it's one of your classics, but it's just such an iffy area right there, like, ugh. Clapton has earned several Grammys for his solo music, as well as a Lifetime Achievement Grammy for... I believe that movie that Eric Clapton was playing in is called Rush, and I'm pretty sure Rush isn't even playing in the fucking uh, music thing right there, in the fucking movie. Shame, shame, fucking shame. You know, for the movie director, but especially for Eric Clapton for not inviting Rush. Like, fuck all those blokes. His time with Green. I mean, this is a classic song now. Ginger Baker, who, pu who punched a fucking cameraman in the nose, I'm pretty sure. According to Loudwire, so it must be true, right? Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Sting. Number nine, Sting, the police. What is this song? Englishman in New York. Yeah, I, I haven't really listened to this song in full, but I do recognize this song. I've heard the song on the radio before. Known for pioneering the new wave trend, the police definitely... I think that Sting progressively gets worse uh, in his own, whereas I think the police got progressively better as the years went on. That's what I think. You know, not a huge fan of both, but I still appreciate, you know, the police for being as unique as they were. And, you know, I have to give it to the police. They at least were way better than UB40. Like, fuck UB40. Fucking police rip-off blokes. Like, fuck those guys. Like, yeah, the police are, you know, the police are a classic rock band. Not per se my thing, but I do appreciate them. But fuck UB40 and fuck that Paris Hilton hoe for ripping off UB40 song. Of ripping off UB40 uh, and UB40 ripping off another fucking band. So fuck all of those guys, except, except for the police, because, you know, they're genuine good bands. So. Cannot really deny them, so there you go. Oh my, oh my god, this video is 12 minutes, 2 minutes in. 2 minutes into this video, that's, that's messed up. I have to speed it up a little bit. Dead man's boots. Oh man, this thing looks old. He kind of looks like Flea in a way. He kind of looks like Flea. Career lasting nearly 30 years, and even a few appearances in film to his name, Sting has earned. A yeah, the the stalker song, of course. If you play this at your wedding, you're fucking brain dead. Not, not because it's a terrible song, it is a good song in my opinion, but uh, you know, it's a fucking stalker song, just read the fucking lyrics, it's so obvious, so I mean, come on now. Oh, um, yeah, Diana Ross, who cares? Uh, Diana Ross, uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about soul singers, Aretha Franklin and all that lot. Singer Diana Ross was a major part of this popularity. Donna Summer? I don't know. Diana Ross was seen as such a star that in 1967, Motown founder Barry Gordy decided to change the group's name to Diana Ross and the Supremes. Huh? They just called the Supremes, though. I mean, there's just nothing happening here. I just think it's really boring. Which produced such hits as Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Oh, there's so much so obnoxious. I mean, you singing higher. I mean, it is a good metaphor, you know, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, and you going higher with your voice and oh, I'm higher than the mountain or something. That's a good metaphor. I just don't think the execution is really uh, well executed, I suppose. It didn't make sense. Oh, uh, that other stalker, fuck. Uh, how is he called again? Fuck's sake. Lionel Richie, yeah. I just said it and then it showed up. 
Swear to God. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Oh, that's creepy. Oh, uh, yeah, Phil Collins. Yeah, sure. Feel it in the air tonight. Phil Collins, Genesis. I can hear it calling in the air tonight. But I mean... Did, didn't he only have like two successful records before he like completely dropped off? I, w I would more, well, yeah, I guess Phil Collins is more successful than Peter Gabriel, I suppose. I don't know. But they're both, you know, they had their solo career, but it wasn't that huge per se. I guess, you know. It was pretty big on the radio, his first album, but after that, you know, he kind of uh, dwindled down, I suppose. Of the hugely popular British rock band Genesis, Phil Collins had a lot to live up to when he decided to go solo. One of the few entries on our list to remain a member The Lella Confusion of video is so cheesy. <laughs> At least I do love the song though, but still. Collins became the lead singer of Genesis after Peter Gabriel's departure, who was coincidentally another contender for our top 10. Oh yeah. I just wanted to say, why is Phil Collins on, on there but not Peter Gabriel? That's so, yeah, so iffy for me. But I guess Phil Collins is the popular, the more popular of the two, so there you go. And now Peter Gabriel only has really sledgehammer, whereas Phil Collins has, you know, Susudio, that's like a hit, which Watch Mojo called one of the worst. Susudio's a banger, fuck off Watch Mojo. Um, In the Air Tonight is a big hit. Uh, there are probably more songs out there that I can't recognize. You know, there are hits that I know from Phil Collins. I'm just really bad with titles. But Phil Collins is the more popular of the two, so there you go. One more night. Uh, oh, Dr. Dre, yeah. Number six, Dr. Dre, NWA. Although, Niggas with Attitude is not really a band, but I get what you're saying, you know. Yeah, the Dr. Dre career. Um, if it counts, he technically produced, you know, uh, Snoop Dogg's career, or Snoop Dogg's debut, and then, you know, it went on to shit. He produced for Eminem and he sang on that, so I guess, you know, but it is kind of iffy to put a producer on this list. But I get what you're saying, I get what you're saying. With his impressive solo career and acting resume, Ice Cube also had potential to make this list. Yeah, I see that. But Ice Cube you really only had a solo career and his acting career, I suppose. Still pretty good though, yeah, so he was a contender, but Dr. Dre has more to his name though. Our decision to go with the doctor and he has a better career, so come on. Comes back to their shared roots. The release of NWA's premiere album, Straight Outta Compton, in 1988, marked the beginning of the infectiously popular gangster rap genre. Easy as his name and the boys coming straight out of Compton. However, it was Dre who won a Grammy for his solo effort in 1988. Nothing but a thing. Pretty much the best rap song. I mean, come on now. It's just such a shame that he only has like two bangers in his discography. It's such a fucking shame because fucking The Chronic is such a classic and 1999 or no, 1999, 2001 is such a. They're such so, so classic, you know, but he doesn't have anything other, anything else other than those two. And he has content now. So. It's such a shame that he didn't, you know, go further into his own career, but he just, you know, he, w he wanted to be low-key. He literally got like 3 billion off of the fucking Beats by Dr. Dre, you know, sold to Apple shit. He, he is a fucking billionaire, so he can just lay down and just do his thing. Continued on to become one of the most recognized producers in the industry, developing records that launched the careers of Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, and Eminem. I mean, Dr. Dre is set for life, I mean, come on now. He doesn't have to make another record ever. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake, in sync. I'll be on my suit and die, shit, die, shit. I love this song. 
I, I, I love his second and his third album. So classic. Although there was a big gap between those albums, but I still love it. I hate NSYNC though, fucking hate NSYNC. Yeah, fuck off. Off, off, off. Fuck. I love Justin Timberlake. Like, I love his solo career. Fucking hate in sync. Like, when you listen to any other Justin Timberlake song, just, you know, on his own, it sounds amazing. It sounds like classic, classic pop in a way. Whereas with fucking in sync, it just sounds like cheesy ass, you know, it sounds like a poor man's One Direction. And One Direction ain't a good band, so yeah, that's that's not a good sign. If you even want to call them a band. But watch Mojo does so for this video, I will do that too. To make more sense. And that second album that was produced by um, Timbaland. Like Timbaland was everywhere in the 2000s, mate. Completely disappeared after that, but he was everywhere back then. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne, how did I not think about that? Fuck's sake. Yeah, solo career pretty much. Number four, Ozzy Osbourne, yeah. Black Sabbath. Ozzy has yes, arguably the greatest solo career or the post band career ever. Should be number one. Oh wow. Uh, by the way, uh, get Bell Ozzy because he's tweeting that he's ill and he cancelled the tour with Judas Priest. So Ozzy, get well, I'm a big fan of you, so please don't die, get better, you know, I love Ozzy, so yeah, get better, mate. Black Sabbath helped pioneer the heavy metal sound through the use of its dark imagery, Tony Iommi's heavy guitar riffs, and Osborne's powerful Paranoid, of course. vocals. I love that video too, where it sounds so fuzzy and so in your face. Fucking face melting, honestly. That whole 1980 live performance right there. 1981. Oh, this is from 30, I think? Loner? It's one of the newer ones. It sounds sludgy and doomy as fuck though. That's what I love about... Uh, well, I don't personally love the 13 record, but it sounds more distorted, it sounds more doom metal, so I do really like that. Yeah, also he should be number one though, in my opinion. Uh, or fucking uh, Joe Zomia, I suppose, maybe. Well, Dave Grohl. Uh, Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, Beyonce Destiny's Child, I suppose. I didn't think about that because I'm not a huge Beyonce fan, but sure, go with that. I guess this list is based off of how popular the act is. After the uh, after the band's career, I suppose, and Beyonce is way bigger than Destiny's Child, so yeah, I guess she deserves a high spot on this list. Whereas with Eric Eric Clapton, he was not per se uh, more popular without the band. He was kind of the same, I suppose. Whereas Beyonce is way bigger. Oh, she looks terrible there, obviously. Really delicious. Probably one of the most outdated songs ever, and it's cheesy as fuck too. This is the most overrated one. I like this song, don't get me wrong. I even like the Jay-Z verse, because I think Jay-Z is a good rapper. But I, I just don't think it's the greatest song of the 21st century, Rolling Stone. Fuck off. It's not the best song out of the 2000s. It's good, it deserves to be up. There might even be top 10. Not number one though, fuck off. With Destiny's Child seemed impossible to beat, but with chart toppers like not per se. It's not impossible, but it is quite difficult. But yeah, Beyonce smashed it out of the park, of course. So, I mean, even I can deny the the legacy of Beyonce. So let her have it. I mean, come on, let her have it. 
Beyonce, arguably the most overrated artist ever, but I do like her. You know, she has talent. I just think her fans are fucking retarded, but that's a whole discussion for another day. Number two. Some fucking anime shit right there. Uh, you know, for Phantom right there. Um, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Jackson 5. Oh, so that means that Dave Grohl's gonna be number one. Nice. Number two. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson did the anime scream. Amazing. Yeah, Janet Jackson and Michael Jackson. Jenna is pretty good too, I think. Tell it to sister. Oh, I didn't even think about it. Fuck sake. Broke onto the music scene in 1967 as a family act of five brothers. Yeah, I believe he got beat the shit out of him while he was in that band because oh, you need to do it perfect and you know now people can just be shit and nobody gives a shit. So there we go. People got tired of that? I'm still dancing the shit out of that song though, so I will do it. One, two, three. Michael broke off on his own. Maybe, maybe. His sixth A, B, solo C, effort, one, Thriller, two, three. is the best-selling album of all time. Yeah, that was this recent argument that the fucking Eagles uh, dethroned Michael Jackson's trailer for being the most popular album ever and everybody was like, what the fuck, because fuck the Eagles. But it was, I believe, in the United States. I believe it was the most sold in the United States. Not of all time, so fuck off White Mojo. Trailer is still the most popular. Fuck the Eagles, you know, Rip Michael. Just fuck the Eagles, man. Like, Trailer is number one forever. I mean, come on. Man. Although he experienced a fall from grace in his later years, yeah. Jason lives on through his music as a pop culture icon among icons. That's the thing. He did decline after, you know, those first two, three albums, but he is still a major legend though. Like, you can't deny MJ, I love him, you know, he's an amazing artist. It's just that his later outing, you know, um, I still like a lot of his stuff, but I think that uh, Blood, on, Blood on the Dance Floor, you know, the remix album, if you want to count it in, and Invincible, of course, last album, you know. They're not the best albums, but they're still, I think, decent for what they are. And I mean, it could have been way worse, so there you go. Love Rock With You. Love it. Uh, oh, George Michael, yeah. Dave Grohl's gonna, gonna be number one, though. Or I want to say fucking um, Damon Albarn. Like, fuck's sake, Gorillaz. That's a good pick right there, but they're probably not gonna pick that. Gwen Stefani, no doubt, who cares. Is there anyone out there that is like a huge No Doubt fan? Like, I don't hate the band, but nah. They never really did it for me. Lauren Hill, the Fujis. One done. Yeah, that's a good one. Although, she had only one album, so nah. Still a good album though, but still. Chair, Sonny and Chair. Like him. You know, he is called Sonny because it's literally his son. And Cher is dancing there like, oh my, like all those sailor mans are turned on. And Sonny is there, like it's such a fucking disaster, man. Her fucking sitting on the cannon, oh my god, like. <laughs> if her son looks back at that video, he's gonna be cringing as fuck at that right there. If I would be the son, I would be cringing the shit out of that. Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, I do. I do like Fleetwood Mac, but I've never heard a, a Stevie Nicks song. So there you go. Oh, the Beatles, really? They're not. They're not even gonna pick Dave Grohl. Okay. Um, oh, wh which Beatle are they gonna pick though? Um, uh, John Lennon, I think. John Lennon is the most popular one, so... Number one, Paul McCartney. Oh, Paul McCartney. Yeah, he has, he has the, the, the lengthiest career, I suppose. Whereas John Lennon, it was, you know, only a decade, so there you go. They are to pop 
pop music. I did not movie. expect Paul McCartney to be on there. Like, to the movies. They yeah, he has Wings and a solo career and uh, fucking that Stevie Wonder collaboration that no one wants to talk about. Yeah, but I mean, it was never bigger than the Beatles, though. Like, fuck's sake. Solo efforts, including John Lennon. Yeah, I, I thought John Lennon, but sure, mate. We chose Paul McCartney as our number one spot, as it was his songwriting ability and vocal talent that carried over into his solo career the best. Ah, uh, what? One spot, as it was his. Chose Paul McCartney as our number one spot, as it was his songwriting ability and vocal talent that carried over into his solo career the best. I guess, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and he also had the more lengthier career, so you gotta give it to him. I would not put Paul McCartney on there, maybe on honorable mentions, but not on number one though. With this artist, tomorrow's are just as important as the yesterdays. Jesus Christ. Cheesy. Do you agree with our list? What solo acts that were previously successful in bands did we miss? Where the fuck is uh, Dave Grohl though? The more musical top ten Dave Grohl had today. fucking Foo Fighters and Queens of the Stone Age. I probably, you know, he drummed on Nine Inch Nails, I believe. Where the fuck is Dave Grohl? Why, why is not like a lot of people saying, oh, Michael should have been number one? Yeah, yeah, he should probably be number one though, I do agree with that. Why is no one saying Gorillaz or fucking um, Dave Grohl, you know? Uh, Damon Albarn, you know, fucking Blur and then Gorillaz. Gorillaz was way bigger, so... Why is no one saying that? Dave Grohl, no one? Are you fucking kidding me? I guess it, it wasn't Dave Grohl's band, so it doesn't count, I guess, but yeah, I still would, would put him on there, but whatever. Um, Alright, thank you for watching this video, I don't have time anymore. Uh, a lot of people are saying Michael Jackson, number one. I probably agree with that, you know. Yeah, so there you go. Thank you and peace.